people be talking about attractive things. That's actually one of them. I'm gonna always hold on to that. Honor and women is very attractive. I love when my woman's. I love when Candace says, "I honor you." That's like one of the most sexiest things. I, I love when she says. I love hearing her hearing her say. Beep. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> hey, that's big right there because yeah, because I honor you. We may not really be having honor like that. That's a hot take. I'm sitting in Pando. Thank you, I'm Melvin Gregg. This is another episode of Nice and Me. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. Yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And this is another episode of the number one podcast in all of Los Angeles. Nice and neat. What's up, my brother? What's the deal, bro? Hey, look, man. Uh, I, we're going to kind of just piggyback off of the last episode that we had. It was it, it caught my attention and it was something I wanted to talk about, Duke. You went back home to Nigeria for those that you that didn't watch the last episode. Uh, Duke went back to Nigeria and we were kind of talking about family structure and you know it made me think about the family structure in America as opposed to in Nigeria. And you said, yo, you didn't really see any broken families. Mm -hmm. You didn't really see any too many single mothers like throughout the course of your life, not mm -hmm. just this trip. Throughout the mm -hmm. course of your life. And it was fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. It was fascinating to me because we began talking about culture and in understanding culture, sometimes culture may not always be convenient for you, but culture will keep you on the right path. Mm -hmm. And you said the land of the free, America, mm -hmm. a lot of times just sways you away from that. Mm -hmm. And you also said something just off camera right now. Mm -hmm. What did you say about options? I said um, too many options being a benefit is a, an illusion. I think when it looks like we had like having too many options to to the to the naked eye, you know, on the on the surface seems like oh great, the more options the merrier, yeah. right? And everybody wants more. And mm -hmm. America is if there's one country that describes more. It's America, you know. So the more the merrier. So um, the more the merrier. I think it's like yo, like we have a lot of options. We think that it's a it's a good thing, but you know, having options is a is a double edged sword. Like Dami said, all right. There's a there's a there's another another side of that, you know. And I think the more options you have, the harder it is to make one. Which I think ultimately you end up not which, making. Which, one. which it's confusing, and you don't make one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and when you put a lot of things in front of our faces, it's just we don't know really what to pick. And that's just across the board in anything. Okay. I kinda wanna start from the top and and I, I kinda wanna reconfigure this. In Nigeria, and when you have families and you're getting married, first I'm gonna ask you, do you do you guys still have arranged marriages? I'm sure they do. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Does your village participate in arranged marriages? Well, it's not arranged. It's more I'll, I'll bring someone for you to to meet, and if you guys hit it off, you guys hit it off. But that happens all the time. What's the purpose? The purpose is to streamline the dating and courtship process, right? I did the work for you. I know this person comes from a good family, so you don't have to. You can do your own digging, but I'm only going to bring someone to your table that who I think is going to help further this family. So that's the purpose. So we have, we're in alignment with our philosophies. Mm -hmm. We're in alignment with how we want to raise our children. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're in a We're just in alignment. Just alignment. That's yeah. what the point of it is. Yeah. And a lot of times it comes from two parents being in alignment too. All right. So on the opposite sides or together. On on the opposite sides. Okay. So if when my, they grew up together. So, so if my if my mom and dad are in alignment with another another mom and dad, mm -hmm. and they have a daughter, and they want to. They want me to court her they'll bring her to me and say okay you guys are the families we already know the families are similar all right so see if it works mm -hmm. you know and have you seen it before yourself i've seen it what is the strength of that marriage from those two families well i don't know everything that's go going on behind mm -hmm. closed doors but from, from matter of fact better question what's the divorce rate of those families <laughs> i don't know any couple that's divorced i don't know any family that's divorced from that wow personally not, not one. one. <laughs> I don't. One. I don't know any person. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not possible, and I'm also not saying that the shit 
don't be going through things behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. But I don't see, as far as divorce goes, I ain't seen it. So I'm, I'm asking because as we're connecting philosophy with, I'm connecting philosophy with divorce rate. Uh-huh. And I'm talking, I'm, I'm really thinking through the importance of having the same philosophy. And I feel like in order to have the same philosophy, you kind of got to have the same culture. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you can have outside of a culture, you can have like philosophies here and there that match. But when we get into the nitty gritty, the interwoven things, things right. that you haven't even thought about speaking right. about, those are embedded within your culture. Mm-hmm. So when we transition to America and we look at the divorce rate in America, which is hovering over 50 percent typically. I'm thinking about the philosophies and the separation, but then you also said the options. Mm-hmm. What are those options that you feel like infiltrate the divorce rate? Mm. Here. Yes, here. The options. Mm-hmm. Um, the option of the option of people. <laughs> the option of people is just so many different people that you could you could just tell yourself. Like that, yeah, you could just tell mm-hmm. yourself, well, if this person's not loving me or I'm not happy in this marriage, I can go find somebody else. Even if I don't want to be married, I could just find someone else. I think the option of sexual stimulation and, and yeah. lust is another thing, right? No one was, no one ever says I got divorced because I want to have. Very rarely people say, "Yo, I got divorced because I want to have sex with other people." But a lot of times, that's what it comes down to as well. I think the option of just fun. I'm bored. You know, I just want something new. I want something more exciting, and I'm tired of the same old, same old, and I want to be. I want a thrilling life, you know. I think that's the thing. Um, I think the option of just travel the world, right? Mm-hmm. You, you don't have to be confined to so mm-hmm. many places, uh, one place. I think there's a lot of things that have a lot to do with divorce. I, I would add to like the option of like the grass looks greener. Yeah. Because when you look at, I think social, it's hard not to talk about what we're doing in life without mentioning social media. Yeah. But when you look, turn on social media, everybody just look like they. They got great shit going on. Yeah. I'll say this, oh, people in Nigeria got the same exact social media. Yeah. But you know how you know how algorithms work? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's only gonna show you what's what what's crazy. It only shows you what's in your tribe. Right? <laughs> not, not, not even social not even just social media, just like proximity. Yeah. Like not just social media. You turn off social media and you go to the liquor store and like the lady and the men that used to be together, they're probably divorced, right? So 1, it's happening in schools. Our kids are going to the schools where yep. one parent is in the picture, one parent is not. Yep. So it's regardless of social media, it's proximity. You know, I think what's interesting is a lot of times you get all these other reasons why people divorce, right? And a lot, I think a lot of it comes down to just not being on the same page with values. That's what I comes down to. Right, so you thinking, nah, I want it my way, and you're thinking about how you feel, and you're not thinking about family, you're not, and and some people think that's okay, right? But I think that's what a lot of divorce comes down to. Yeah, I, and like you're saying, values. When you have values, your values are not always convenient, and I think once people run into the space of inconvenience, mm. then they got to kind of go to like, it don't feel good, so mm. let me go with what feels good, mm. and. You know, in my relationship, we, we, we talk about, okay, what do we value? And this is really what drove me here today. When you said culture is a part of, is what the family is, I sat, I sat back and I was like, what is the culture of my family? What will my children take from us without us having to say it? They'll see it, they'll experience it, they'll understand it. I know me, I got married. I want my children to see what what a family under one roof looks like. I don't want my children mm-hmm. to have to go back and forth and mm-hmm. maneuver through houses. So whatever I need to do to make sure that works is my culture. Mm-hmm. That's 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 what I've subscribed mm-hmm. to. And that's what me and Brittany, we sit down yep. and we talk about. Like, hey, whatever we need to do to make sure that our children can experience love in our house, mm-hmm. that's what we on, mm-hmm. right? Not trying to be yeah. funny. So with that being said, we adopted a policy. Policy that we adopted, it's going to sound funny, but it's serious. It's fuck them kids. Uh-huh. We, 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 it's funny. We have the same policy over at the Boldness. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> hey, and, and it doesn't mean... Fuck them kids. Fuck them kids. No, it doesn't. But it just means, look, right. when, we, when we with our kids, we parent hard. But when it's us, it's us. Yep. We don't worry about these kids. We don't talk about them. 
nothing. It's us. We are focused on us and what the building of us really looks like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she used to think I was joking when we was when we were dating. And I think it's important to have these conversations prior to you guys are in the space because that's what creates the culture. Mm -hmm. right. We're talking about this, so when we face it and it's inconvenient, we talked about it. We, we set it in stone. Yeah. We already got the foundation. And she used to think I was joking, like, no, you don't really feel that way. And it's like, no, no, no. Our child is going to be successful by the way we love each other. That is a part of the foundation in our house. Mm -hmm. We have to love each other in order for him to be okay. Mm -hmm. How important do you think it is to, to revisit that conversation? to make sure that the family structure stays implemented. Like how often do we have to re-talk about like, just to make sure that your, your values are still the same and huh. we're still in alignment. Like how, how often do you, is that something that you guys have once a month? I th I is think, that too soon to have it? Like, is it once a year? Like, I think it's, I th I think it's a great question. And I, th I feel like- I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking myself. So check this out, check this out. Part of the reason I feel convicted right now, I feel convicted because it's not revisited enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get so caught up, just like every parent, you get 1, so caught up in the monotony of taking care of your child, taking care of your family, understanding, oh, we got to do this, we got to take them here, we got to do this, and you're not even worried about your partner anymore. So I truly feel like, even if it's just in a joking way, when you got hey, fuck them kids. Yeah. Just, just a reminder. Just a reminder. Just a reminder. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, this is this yeah. us. Like, yeah. this is us. And I feel like it should be revisited. I'm saying you. I know you guys have a date night. What once a week? Yep. Every date night. Yep. Every date night, it should be revisited. Like, and I say it in a sense of, man, you guys are gonna be what gets y'all through. Y'all daughter, she's gonna leave the nest one day. Yep. Future son, he's gonna leave the nest one day too. I'm what I'm thinking about, man. I was telling somebody the other day, a, a true success story for me is is becoming empty nesters with my wife, and we look at each other and we like, yo, what's on the menu? What we on tonight? What we finna do? Where are we going? And it's not, well, what do we do now? We don't have the kids. I don't ever want to feel that. Nah, I don't ever want to feel that. What our job is, is to raise little people to be good big people. Our job isn't to, isn't to, isn't to marry our kids. Yep. Yeah. We want to raise little people to be good big people. That's my partner. Yep. I'm her partner. So I'm, I'm thinking. I'm and, like, and you guys give yourself the best chance to doing that by loving each other first. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh. That's my philosophy. Yep. And our philosophies are in alignment with that. Mm -hmm. Can you Some imagine? people don't feel like that. Most people don't feel like that. Most people don't feel like that. Most people feel like they gotta love the kid first. Yes. Which leads them to say, yo, I actually don't need you. I can do this myself. So that, th those people too, I feel like make their purpose their kids. And I feel like, and this is another conversation, but I feel like that gets really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because then you become an empty nester, you come to a point where like, I, have, I don't have anything to pour into because you haven't been pouring into the relationship, mm -hmm. you've been pouring into the children. You know, mm -hmm. that, that, that shit gets, I think that's really, really interesting. I mean, you make your kids feel the void that you're purposely not even, yeah. that you have from not even giving yourself to anything else. Yep. You know, you just, you, you made me think about it, Duke. We are, I feel like we're in a time where I've heard male and females, mostly females, say, I just want to have a kid. Mm -hmm. I don't need a partner. I don't need somebody to raise this kid with. I just want to have a kid. Mm. And a lot of these women are successful women saying this. They have the means to be able to raise the child financially by themselves. And, you know, it's, 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 it's out there. What do you guys feel about that messaging? I think people underestimate how much it takes to raise a kid. I think they underestimate it. And I think that it's, um, it's easier than it looks in real time, mm -hmm. right? And I think when people- it's Harder than it looks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, um, no, it is harder than it looks, but they think it's easier than it looks, mm -hmm. right? And it's one of those things where you can say that when you're comfortable. And you know, I can, I'll raise a kid by myself when, you, when, when it's like you sit sitting, sitting down, it's air conditioned, you're in your nice car, Right, you're young, you're in your early 30s, late 30s, or late 20s, whatever the case may be, right? But it's, you're in a very comfortable, everything's set up for you. And you're only thinking about right now. But you're not really thinking about 30 years. 
You ain't thinking about five years, 10 years. You ain't thinking about that, right? Because when you're actually in the fire of raising a kid, it's hard. And most people that raise kids by themselves don't do a good job, regardless of what the numbers are on the internet, regardless of what the podcasters are saying, regardless of what you what the influencers are saying. Most people that are raising kids by themselves do not do a good job, right? And we hear people talk about it. So we think, oh, well, they're doing it, so it must be working. But most people, you got to think about the number of people that are raising kids by themselves that we can't hear behind closed doors suffering because they don't have any help. It's not smart. It's not smart. And why do you want to raise a kid anyway? For you or for a kid? So selfish. Why do you want to raise it? Why when people say I want to raise a kid, who is it for though? Is it just yeah. to to I want I want a doll to play with? Or is it because I actually it's want to bring life, man. I want to bring someone into this world to be an amazing human being? It's one of the two. It has to be one of the two. It's for you or for the kid. So if it's for the kid, how can you not give the kid the best opportunity? How can you know? There's the best opportunity out there, and not get, and not try to give that person that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And game and and risk it. Nah, nah. I think the women that are saying that are women who don't truly understand um, the dynamic uh, that a, a man brings to the situation um, to complete a family. I think there's certain things that kids need to see and understand between the exchange and interaction between the, the mother and the father. And I think a, by a woman saying that she's already robbing the kid of, of those experiences and those learning, those teaching moments um, that happens. I think there's, uh, I don't think they truly understand how much weight that bears by having two parents in a household. Um, and to, to add what Duke is saying, I definitely think they're underestimating the work. Um, and if we, we could go through a list of friends and contacts that we have on our phone um, that are single mothers, because we all know them. If we sit down and ask them today, like how, what's, what, are they, what would they uh, grade the level of difficulty of raising this kid, they will all say 10. It's very hard to, to raise a child by yourself. It's very hard to teach a child everything when you only know one side, you know? So I think those women um, just don't truly understand what they're talking about. <laughs> Honestly, Yo, I, 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 feel, I feel like they, they're, they're really missing, they're, there's meat on the bone that they're missing out on, you know, I've, by saying things like that. I've heard single women say that they would rather raise a kid by themselves before they have a kid. But then after they have a kid, they'll say, no, nah, I'd rather, raise my kid with someone else. Mm -hmm. I've heard that for sure. Because it's different. I've never heard a single woman say, yo, I would do it again by myself. I never heard that. I mean, we're, we're, we were created to depend on one another. I never heard that. You know what I mean? So like, why would you even want to go through that by yourself? I wouldn't want to go. I wouldn't want to go. I, me raise a kid by myself? I wouldn't want to raise without a kid a woman? by child? No way. I think, I think a, um, a woman needs a woman. A woman needs a mother. A child needs a mom. And a child needs a dad. Yep. Cause I could, there's so many things that my child would be missing without having a oh, mom in the sure. life. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Sure. It's just so see, many I things. See, I see, it, I see it every day. Like, yeah. you, you could ruin your kid without, like, may, maybe you can raise a successful man. Maybe he's successful, right? Or a successful girl. But there's so many things that that person is going to be lacking yep. in their life. They may not be a man. You may not raise a man who understands empathy. Yep. Which is needed. Yeah. You may not raise a man who understands how to communicate with women or understand women or control his emotions. You don't know that. And what happens when you raise a man who doesn't know how to control his emotions? You start killing people. He's in prison. He ends up in prison. You start killing them. like that's the thing. So I need a, I, I would need a woman to raise to help raise a kid, yep. regardless of how macho I think I am. The child needs both parents. The child needs both parents. The child needs both parents, period. But that's not also saying that because I think what happens is the, the the hard part about it is we see people who are successful and doing well that are, were raised by single parents. And we're like, well, if they could do, I could do it. See, it's not like a guarantee. That's a small percentage. It's crazy because but th we're look that's what you're saying. We're looking at the one percentage uh -huh. of the world. Less than that. Yep. You know what I mean? The, yep. the, the other women aren't on the front lines talking about that, talking uh -huh. about it. Uh -huh. You know, I, the average woman in America that is a single parent is hurting. That's, uh, uh, the average single mother in America is not happy. 
She's she's struggling. To, and that's not even a misogynistic stat. That's no, nah, that's just man. a that's just a fact. So, it's just a fact. I'm, I'm gonna ask you guys, how do you feel like? Because we're we're saying it's different. It's different in other countries as it is in America. How do we feel like this dynamic was created in this country? How was it created? Yes. How was that dynamic created? Because will we say that families have always been separated in America? I mean, we would almost be fools not to mention that slavery had a huge impact on this in, in, in our families, in our culture. You know, uh, I think coming off the back of slavery is a great way to like start breaking up families' homes. And I feel like our, our families, our culture in particular has been the biggest recipient of that, of broken homes coming off of slavery. When people say slavery, though, um, is the reason, or slavery is, I guess, it's institutionalized. We're, like, we've been institutionalized, so, like, our divorce rates are higher and things like that. Like, how, how what does that mean? Like, what, what, going, what went on in slavery to, like, to, to make us not want to stay with each other and stay married and raise kids together? Well, it's not us. It's It's... The people who enslaved us breaking up taking the men right uh -huh. so that, that that's a result you the man gets taken away he gets shipped off ship now there's no men in the family the family's still carrying on but it technically it's broken now right we're not missing links and i think there's a lot of situations that have carried off off of the back of that you know what i mean that have led into now granted so when does that happen is it is this like a situation where it's like oh we haven't had our men long so long that we don't even need them anymore is it one of those things it's not that we don't need them anymore, but we've adapted. We've adapted and we've learned how to, to live without them. You know? So it's like women, women could grow up seeing their mothers like that and get strength from that. Right? Uh -huh. I, oh, my, mother's, my mother's strong. And you could identify strength with, with that. Right? So you could say, okay, well, if... I don't need a man then. I don't need a man because I'm strong just like my mother. Yeah. No, I could do this by myself. My mother held down the house. Big mama held down the house. And I think, you know... That's a vicious cycle that people that we could fall uh -huh. into. Uh -huh. I, I mean, that that's my opinion on that. Yeah. I, what about I feel you? like I feel like slavery played a part um, in physically separating families. I feel like slavery physically separated families. However, when I think about my family, a lot of my friends' families, and just the families that have been here for his for 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 generations, the divorce rate didn't start happening until generations after slavery ended. What, what year did slavery end? 1868. Cool. So I would say almost up to 100 years after that is where I feel like divorce rates started to really, really go up. And I wouldn't necessarily say, I feel like slavery separated families physically. But when we got the opportunity but to the get back together. the idea of family you're talking about, we still had. That we had the idea of family still. So when we had the opportunity to get back together, we were together. And we lived together. And we grew together. My grandparents, my great-grandparents, everybody was together. Everybody was together. And as we talked about at the beginning of the episode, when we kind of start implementing more options and the, the ideology of family necessarily isn't the main thing that is the the big picture that we see then i feel like that's when divorce started happening a little bit more so like we see we see drugs infiltrate this country mm -hmm. ironically they were placed in our communities and our communities that were thriving prior to that families were separated from that then we have legislation that comes in that says single mothers get this amount of fixed income every single month you can't have a man in the house. Almost incentivizes you not to have one. Almost incentivizes you to not have a man in the house. The same drugs take those men into prison. Yep. So I feel like, yes, slavery, slavery, slavery played a part in physically separating us. But when the mental anguish happened, when the, like you said, dude, I don't really need you started happening. You start putting the resources in front of people that don't need people. You start, okay, cool. Well, you know what? You can go to work. You can uh, get this fixed income. You can live in Section Eight, but it's it's a single it's a single family living, single mother living with like those things. I feel like what broke families up. Mm -hmm. Our our projects are what broke families up. Like 
I feel like those are the things that broke families up. And now we're looking at, now we're looking at my mom did it. I can do it. Now we're looking at, you know what? I'm my mom's man as a son. Now we're looking at these dynamics that are going, that are running through our country. These dynamics that are us. These are our peers. These are our homies. These are our sisters. Like these are now the dynamics that are running. That's not, that's not how I grew up. I didn't grow up like that, but I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm saying this when I'm looking at relationships, like thinking about people's grandparents, I don't know too many people's grandparents that were divorced. Like they, they, they were divorcees. I don't know too many people's great grandparents that were divorcees. I don't know too many people's grandparents that never were married. I got you. So it's like a new thing. You it's said. a new thing. I'm not saying it didn't exist, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is it wasn't the norm. Yeah. How it is the norm it's so now. Normal now. It's so normal. It's the norm now. It's normal now. To have to say, you know what? I can raise this child by myself. You know, let me have this child out of wedlock. And not necessarily, and I don't think the issue is having a child out of wedlock. I think the issue is having the mindset that I don't care to get married and have a child. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the issue is. If you have a child out of wedlock and you say, yo, I'm gonna still, I'm not saying you did it right, but I'm gonna still do my best to make sure that we remain a family mm -hmm. and move forward that move way. Forward, yeah. We're not separating the family. Mm -hmm. The statistic is, is Hey, yo, you're over here, you're over here. This child is bouncing back and forth. This child is getting indoctrinated differently. Our philosophies aren't the same. The culture is different. Now, how, how can we build strong family when we have divorce at the top? Cannot. I don't mm -hmm. see it. Cannot. And the picture, the, the picture that's painted of each parent is inconsistent. You know what I mean? So like... When we divorce, when we're, not, when we're in a broken home, mom is telling me that dad is one way when dad is actually a way. Mm -hmm. When dad is actually something that's totally different. Dad is telling me that mom is one way and that mom feels like this, but I'm not seeing you guys from the same household and seeing you guys talk about each other in the same household. So my, my perception of my mom and my dad is inconsistent, um, which, which eventually adds to the demise of family structure. You understand? And, and in family structure, you know, I think a lot of times we like to talk about, too, we don't understand the impact that divorce plays on the wealth gap that we talk about when it comes to the African-American community. Hmm. We always say, oh, you know, we, we didn't get to achieve this. And, you know, all these things are true. Uh, we had red line in our communities and we had, we had, we had. And it's like, all right, well, in that we're contributing when we're getting divorces and we're breaking up and we're separating. We're separating we're separating money when that's happening. Forget just the individuals. We're separating money when that's happening. It just got weaker. It just got weaker. We no longer have that income. And in that, it's like I understand that we have all of these other things against us, but I would really, really love to see us fight for the things that we do have control of. Mm -hmm. We do have control of staying together. We do have control of having a strong foundation and creating culture and creating even the optics that our children understand. Oh, when I get married, that means it's final. This is the last person I'm going to be with. This is who I'm going to grow old with. This is who I'm going to build with. And this is who we're going to have grandchildren with. And they're going to see how we do it so they can do it as well. Those things are extremely important. I feel like they always say, unless you see it, it's hard for it to be done. Mm hmm if we grow up in a generation of divorce and separation and single parent households, how can we say that family is going to be the most important thing? Mm -hmm. And I think it's so difficult. And that's why I, I commend, I commend all of us for saying like, yo, I, I really want to do the best that I can possibly do with my family, yeah. with my household. Just even seeing, Oh, I mentioned in the last episode, the relationship that you have with your in-laws and building the relationship that you created with Chanel and her in-laws and building so we can be like, yo, you know what? We're going to make that link even stronger to where mm -hmm. when we, it's, it's, it's not just separating us. We're separating an entire, the entire family, the thought process, the culture, the philosophies. So it, we, we can't do that. I think the, the operative word in the beginning of that statement that you were making, Jalan, is fight. You know, you got to, we have to fight to uh, remain loving in the relationship. We have to fight to keep the family together. 
men have to fight to uh, fight temptation. You have to fight to be faithful. You have to fight. You got to be willing to fight. And if you're unwilling to, if you're not willing to get scrappy, if you're not willing to like, and figuratively, figuratively speaking, of course, right? If you're not willing to like get bloody, get a couple scratches, couple bruises, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Every family is gonna be tested, stretched. All of our families have been stretched in one capacity or another. Um, so you gotta be willing to fight through that in order to keep it together. If you, if you don't have that, that dog in you, as we like to say, that if, we don't, if you don't have that, both, everyone involved in this family, the family will cease to exist. That's, that's what's gotta keep, the, that's what's gonna keep the family structure tight and, and living on and having a legacy is that everyone put up a fight in here. If all of us are just, not all of us, but if some of us aren't willing to fight, then it just, it just doesn't work. But I think that, again, that goes back, back to the philosophies and making sure that we all have the same values and recircling, re, re, resurfacing those conversations and make sure that we're on the same page so that when we show up to the fight, everybody understands what, what their job is so we can win this battle and move on. Mm -hmm. So we can continue winning the war, right? Because mm -hmm. also too, in war, there's many battles. There's some battles that we're gonna lose, but the objective yeah. is to win the goddamn war. Yeah. The objective is to come home at the end of the day. So, so we're gonna leave about here beat up and bruised and stuff like that, but the idea is to live on and keep fighting to, to win the war. You know, as you, you see, we're talking about philosophies and values and thinking in, in our confusion in our philosophies and in our confusion in our values, the confusion that you create in your child is far more damaging. You're making me think about if I'm a person and I say, Yo, you know what, I can, I'm I'm a I'm I'm a woman and I'm saying like I can have a child. I can raise this child. I have the financial means to do it. I'm successful. I'm smart. I can do it. I just I can do it by myself. And you create a dynamic with that child that sees that you're on the you're the only person there and they never get that interaction from the opposite from the man from the father. They never get that interaction. The dynamic that you create in that human being is a real real interesting dynamic that I'm going to ask you dude. What dynamics have you ever felt in a woman that, that didn't have her father a part of her life as opposed to women that did have their father in their lives? Well, this one right here is kind of close, right? Because Chanel didn't grow up with her father in life. Mm -hmm. So I'm really familiar with this, you know? And my, my ex before Chanel did, she was really tight with her father, all right? So, I mean, there are differences. And I feel like with Chanel, she was much more, um, and she talked about this the last episode, she was much more, um, she, wanted, she wanted to be in control more of, of just her direction. You know what I mean? So she really didn't, she didn't come from a place where she was just so trustworthy of a man, right, to mm -hmm. lead. Mm -hmm. So naturally, if I'm dealing with a woman who's, coming from a place where she's not trustworthy or mad. So we're, we're bumping heads because, yo, I'm not, I haven't done anything that's, you know, that, that doesn't show you that I'm, tr that you can't trust me. Mm -hmm. right? I haven't anything to, to abuse your trust. So I'm like, yo, trust me. My actions are saying, trust me. And she's not trusting me. Right. But it, it had nothing to do with me. It just had something to do with her circumstance or her experience. And that was my experience with that. So that was frustrating early on. Right. So it took us a number of conversations and experiences to, for that to unravel. But I'm someone who gives people chances. And I was like, yo, I'm not someone who is just like, yo, if you don't, you don't have a relationship with your dad, then, you know, I'm asking you off. That wasn't me just because I understand that although it's likely that something could be, right, there's still a possibility that it's not, right? And I was, I was like, yo, you're worth it to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like... I want, I think I, I can help you get over that. I want to unravel that. And I think that was the experience with her. Um, before her, the experience that my ex had with her father, it just seems like she was just more, just like, I'm going to follow your lead. Just tell me like, what up, what's, what's up, right? Um, she was more just a simple person, like family oriented. Um, so that was the difference. She, yeah. grew up, she grew up seeing that. She, she grew up seeing that, right? But um, I also think that there's other things that I, like, that I love about Chanel. You know what I'm saying? I love the fact that she's ambitious and 
I love the fact that she's going to challenge, right? And not just succumb to like whatever I want and just say, yo, like, what, you, what do you need? And she's gonna make me think about, okay, how can I show this woman more in a better way that I can lead this person, you know? How to, and then it made it, it kind of made me step my game up in terms of the things I could show her. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, cool. I, I ain't going to ask you no more. I ain't going to talk about it. I'm going to just show you. And then, you know, sometimes when you do something for long enough, you can't even deny it. Mm-hmm. Right? And what that proved to me is that she's not so stuck in her ways. And also what I loved about our circumstance is that it wasn't just a situation. It's like, y'all, I didn't grow up knowing my father's, so this is how I am. It wasn't that. It's more like, you know what? I know I didn't have the best relationship with my father, but I'm willing to just change things and I acknowledge that. So let's talk about it. All right. So that was my experience with her. But generally speaking, like there is a difference, you know, but I think that, you know, it's not the end of the world for me. It's not just women, though. It's not just women. It's not just women. Like as you're talking, as you, as you ask them that question, yeah. I'm thinking about a friend that I went to college with. So tight, man. Um, really tight. And I ran with this dude all the time, man. Uh, I'm talking about hanging out, chilling studying the game of football in the streets hanging out this was my this was my guy and I, I i vividly remember us just in casual conversation he's watching me clean up be, I'm being tidy in the house nice and neat and he like bro like literally told me out of his mouth verbatim man i could tell the difference between you and i and you having a father and me not growing up with, with one like you're so structured and detail oriented and I don't know if detail came from my father but there was something that he recognized in me that he don't have in himself that just comes natural to me and he was like bro and I he it literally directly connected to him not having a father in his life mm. so I don't think that question is is for men and women like yeah. the father yeah. not being mother or father not being present in the household is going to affect the kid in some way form or fashion you know what I mean and whether they realize it early on or late in their 20s, 30s, or even 40s, people are still dealing with that kind of trauma. Yeah. You know, so like everyone is affected by that shit. That's why it's so important for us to goddamn fight for the goddamn relationship, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Jolando. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of talk about women wanting to raise kids or being okay with raising children by themselves. All right, how much of that is how much of that is a is a man's fault? Because mm. a woman will say, "Well, I'm raising a kid by myself. I don't want to, but I got to because the men's is not the, the men are not around." Yeah, fifty right? percent. So how much? How much is that? How much of it is it? Fifty <laughs> percent. A woman's choice, and, a, and it's a man's doing. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Without him even realizing, he's at fault mm. because whatever experiences she's had told her that she doesn't need something that she needs. And she didn't tell herself that. She seen something, she experienced something, and it may not necessarily be the man that she's dealing with directly. And this is why I say these experiences that we have create dynamics. Your dynamic and your understanding comes from, from being a child. Mm-hmm. The way that we perceive life is from being a child. You could only develop as an adult, but mm-hmm. being a child is the way that you look at life. Yeah. So she's seen something from a young age, that may have been doubled down as an adult to where she said, you know what? My life would be more simple if I did it without him. So I'm not, this is, it's never, it's never all one person's fault. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I feel like my grace is developing as I'm getting older and it's making me see things, whether it's 10 steps back or 10 steps forward. It's almost like just playing, a, playing chess with your thought yeah. process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How can I blame her for something that she experienced? I can't blame her for that because the experience somebody put in front of her, it was she was exposed to it, whether it was against her will or with, like, it's not her fault. Mm-hmm. The same exact way how Omar's friend seen something in him that he was like, I don't, I don't have that. Like, can we blame him for that? Can we blame him for 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 not being as tidy as Omar because he didn't grow up in a a, a, a dual parent household? Mm-hmm. I can't blame him for that. Mm-hmm. He was a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. None of us chose to be here, and that's why the onus is always on us and how we raise children. Yeah. In order to put them in the best possible situations, like I'm yeah. I'm aware of. So my son's he'll be five months. Um, by the time this episode comes out, he'll be five months. But when the TV's on, 
I'm like, and I see him paying attention too long. And so let me, let me, let me, let me, see, let me see, consume what he's consuming. Like, you think I'm supposed to just think he's at five months? He's like, I that ain't nothing. I don't let him see the, what's on my screen half the time because I don't know what my next scroll is going to be. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that can trigger his mind, his mm-hmm. thought process, what he, what, how he perceives it at that age. Because so you know what they say about babies, they say that they download so much more information than us, and when they go to sleep, they process it and it's put in their processor, and then they participate in the next day with the information they got the day before, the day before, the day before. That's why they learn so fast. Why do you think a baby at one years old can start saying words and start talking, start walking, start doing the things? We don't learn that fast. We learn, we, the way for us to learn a language is to formally learn a language. A baby will sit there and observe you and then start to speak to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why people are like, you know what, let me get, let's get a, 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 a Latina nanny mm-hmm. so he can learn English and Spanish at the same time because they, they're, 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 they're kids are sponges. They're mm-hmm. really, really sponges. They learn so much. So I'm very, very cautious of what I put in front of him. The way that the tone of voice that me and Brittany speak to each other in front of him, the things that he sees, I make sure when I kiss her goodbye, it's in front of him. He can see it. He can feel it. I told you my mission, my mission is for my children to understand what love is in the household. So they can feel that. They can experience that. So when they go outside the household and they feel anything less, I don't need to be around that. Yep. When they start choosing their partner, they feel anything less than what they seen between their parents. I don't need to be around that. And let's say they do, right? Let's say they do choose somebody who's not that. I have a reference point. Where'd you get that from? You didn't get that from here. Me and your mom don't show you that. Where'd you get that from? And now that holds your child accountable to who they trying to be. It's important. All of these things, bro, we can't, we can't sit here and live life day to day. I, I was watching this movie and again, I felt convicted. The husband's wife died, but they created a 40-year plan together. And somebody told the husband, I see you still on that 40-year plan. He was like, yeah, we put it together. I got to stick through it because they had a daughter. And he's like, yeah, you know, on your, you know, your 16th birthday, three months after your 16th birthday, you get your first car. This is like they, put the, plan. The, they put the plan together. Yep. Everything is put together. And I was like, if you plan on spending the rest of your life with somebody, why wouldn't you put together a 40-year plan? Mm-hmm. What time you guys got that y'all don't got to put together a 40 year plan? <laughs> y'all spend it with each other. I don't be with y'all. So I was like, babe. We gotta put together a plan. We gotta put together a plan. We gotta put together. Whether because this is the thing. You guys play professional sports. You guys have a plan before every single game. And let's say in that plan, you guys are doing the plan, you guys are doing the plan, some things work better than others. You can you can course correct the plan, but you can't go into a situation without a plan. Without a plan. Mm-hmm. Now, now you're planning to fail. And most of us are here just right in the feeling. Mm-hmm. Now, if you got a plan, it could kind of help you overcome and alleviate the feeling a little bit because you could be in a bad place for a week and you'd be like, you know what? Divorce. Mm-hmm. A month, divorce. Three months, divorce. I think the part of the reason why dating is so fun it's because you know there's a finish line to dating. And being a fiance, it's so fun. It's because yep. you know there's a finish line to being a fiance. Mm, yep. What goals are you creating in marriage that create the finish line feeling? And I feel like you have to put together that plan. Mm-hmm. That plan is also going to help create the structure and the culture of your family. It's mm-hmm. good, Jalan. If you have a, a 16 year old kid and they're just like, yo, 16 and three months after, you have you get your first car. What you think your twelve year old gonna expect? Car at sixteen, in three months. Yep. Right. So what you think they are gonna do with their kids? So you have to put together a plan because even if they don't do it, they have seen it. They're like, yep. okay, th- this this works. This is what happened. This is what I experienced. So in that, it was it, it made me really think because we've been we've been watching a lot of family movies. We've been watching movies about family. We've been watching movies about divorce. We've been watching just interesting movies just about the, the relationship dynamics so we can understand even the smallest things that people go through. And we were watching one film and they literally just had one difference of agreement that they allowed to snowball and to be in into an ugly divorce. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, man, if they would have just communicated about that one thing. And I sit back and I look at our relationship and I, and I I take a step back and I I can see how that one thing can cause a snowball of divorce. I can see how that one day of frustration, that one day of being tired so you didn't kiss her goodnight can cause a snowball 
into something that that you you never expected to be there, and now you're so deep in. You're like, yo, I I, I can't kiss her now. It's now over. now y'all not touching each other, and two weeks go by, three weeks go by, and it's just they, it's 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 just like they say, life is fiz- fickle, man. These relationships are fickle, man. And when you guys go through it with your partners, is it is it hard? Like you guys go through like a um, a moment. Or a couple of days of friction, mm-hmm. you know, and you know how it is when it's like it's a dark cloud in the house, or it's just awkward. Is it hard for you guys to restart? Yeah, to find, to find that moment sometimes, to restart. Sometimes, and I, I feel like you, you be really be a little prideful in those moments. That's is that what it I mean? think? Pride, pride creeps in. Pride creeps in. I like to always though. I don't know. Sometimes this works in my favor. Sometimes it, it makes my my wife a little more angry. But I, I try to like break those moments with some type of humor. You try to joke your way out. I of try it. to joke my way out of it. Oh, you are gonna be mad all day, huh? You, you feel me? I try. <laughs> you not even come mad on, no more. Hey, 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 you still mad about that? Yeah, come on, that's, that's yesterday's news, you know. And sometimes it works in my favor. Sometimes it don't. Um, but I. I mean, I've always, I try, as much as I can be combative and love to debate, I also love just like easygoing peace, you know? So however I could try to get back there and if typically, you know, over time, the, the easiest way to get a woman to, to like you is to, to make her laugh. To make her laugh. To make her laugh. So I've always leaned into that um, in, my, in my household. Um, and again, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but more times than not, you know, that's a good way for us to get back on track. But a lot of times though, that your pride will step in the way. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing mm-hmm. it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to be the it one. It ain't to, on me. No, nah, I don't. It, it's on her. That's on her. But you know, the quicker we could get back on the same page, the better we could get back to having a, a, a beautiful home <laughs> with great energy in it. I'm sensitive. When it's a cloud over my house, it's the end of the world. I'm like, man, I don't know if we're gonna survive this. Nah, man. you got nah. all these thoughts. Nah, you, 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 you just feel. I just want my friend right now, but I know I gotta have that conversation in it in order to get her back. Yeah, and I am a very. It doesn't seem like it, but in my relationship, I'm very non-confrontational. I'm a super pick and choose my battles. If it, if I don't feel like it's gonna affect. What our future is, I'm not, I'm not even going to bring it up because it's like, eh, I don't need to cause an argument for that. I don't need to say that. I don't need to do this. So a lot of times I feel like sometimes we should just be over it. Brittany doesn't believe in that. We're going to have a conversation about it in depth, how she felt about it. And honestly, it's helped me out so much because I didn't realize how much I didn't actually talk about my feelings or how something made me feel. It's just, oh, I don't feel like that no more, so I'm good. And we talked about this before. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to talk about it. Oh, how you feel? Like, oh, I'm cool. But it's like, nah, like, how did that make you feel? When you were in that space, how did it make you feel? And it's still, it's still uncharted territory for me, and we still experience it because I still try my best to approach it in a way that will be digestible. Because, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's, I feel like that's going to be an ongoing battle forever. And just the dynamic between men and women. But I try to always approach it in the best way that's going to be digestible and like, hey, you know, you know, I felt like I felt like this. You know, I, f- I felt I got the short end of the stick in this situation, you know, and she, when she hears me, the conversation is super smooth. But when I approach it a little bit more aggressive, it's like, OK, you know, I, I need to approach it a little bit better. But when we're in it, man, when we're in it. I remember the last time we got into it with each other, man, she sent me a coffee at work. Like, and I, I came home thinking it was like a good peace offering. And it was like, oh, no, no, no. I'm just going to, I still love you though. Oh, no, but we still got to talk about it. We still got to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And I was like, wow, that was kind of sexy. Like, I, because I'm super big on, yo, no matter how mad you are at me, love me. Yeah. 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 Love me. No, I don't care how mad. Don't walk by me, not talk to me, because I'll kiss you goodnight. Like you don't know me. Don't act yeah. like you don't know me. Yeah. Love me. So when she sent it to me, I'm like, oh, we're good. We wasn't good. Yeah. But I love you. And I send you coffee. She it's Friday. I sent you a coffee. That's a duty. That's a duty. Love a woman with duty. 
man. Bro, and it was it was just so honorable to me. Yeah. When you see when you see honor in women, oof. People be talking about attractive things. That's actually one of them. I'm gonna always hold on to that. Honor in women is very attractive. I I, I love when my woman's. I love when Candace says, "I honor you." That's like one of the most sexiest things. I I love when she says. I love hearing her hearing her say. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) Hey, that's big right there because because honor you because women don't really be having honor like that. That's a hot take. That's a whole to- that's a whole topic. We don't episode. really be having honor like that. I'm talking. I'm not even talking about because it's different, right? We're talking about because somebody's gonna be like, men don't be having honor. Men always be cheating on them. Whose whose voice is the women's? Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> the, the women, nah, but like honor is big. I never hear women talk about yo. I'm prideful in the honor I have or the mm. honor I upkeep. I don't really feel like people talk about women in conjunction with honor a lot i don't feel like it you have y'all i hear i hear not the know, word i hear I, associated you know, with them. i hear um graceful mm-hmm. yep. you know i hear things like like that but not honor i hear uh caring and considerate but not honor you know i think uh, that's to say to say yo that showed me that my woman is honorable I think that's a different type of thing because I never hear that. And I think that's important. And that right there, would, for me, would help reassure me, oh, are we good? Yeah. Are we we really good? Because if she's mad at me and she's still, be, she's still able to honor me as my husband or my boyfriend mm-hmm. or my fiance and still do her duty, are we good? Because that's hard, right? Because for a woman to honor her duty even when she's mad, that's different because women are emotional people. Mm-hmm. So a woman can justify any action with her emotion. So she can break a window and be like, well, I was mad. You made me mad. I cannot talk to you. Well, don't make me mad. I'll, then mm-hmm. I'll talk to you. You know, don't make, I, I, she'll ignore you and be like, yo, you made me mad. You said something crazy. Right? But a woman who understands how to be mad and still honor you. Take my money. Like like you said. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you said we good. Like I had to really take a step back and was the, the reason why it made me feel so good is because it wasn't we good. It was we gonna be good. Mm-hmm. And I think knowing that you're gonna be good is way important than just being good in that moment. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be good. Okay. And I still went home she and tried not it. to have a conversation. And she was like, Nah, we're gonna have a conversation. I just had to let you know. She said, "Why do you do that?" I'm like, "What? You know, we got something to talk about." Mm. Uh, Tired. I worked all day. I wanted to sit down. Yeah, that's why I gave you the coffee. That's why I gave you the coffee. Wake your ass up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. That's why I got you that coffee. Yeah, yeah. man. And it, that it was just, that was so honorable to me. It was so honorable to me, and 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 uh, it it just it made me feel good about us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you think there's anything wrong, though, with a woman saying that, yo, I just want to be single? Outside of just kids. Outside of just... I ain't saying like a woman says, yo, I want to raise a kid single. But just a woman says, yo, I don't want to get married. I don't care. I don't care to get married. I also don't care to have kids. What do you mm-hmm. feel? How do you feel about that? You asking me? Mm-hmm. I'm such a thought process guy. Mm-hmm. I always like to know like where the root of the thought process mm-hmm. came from. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say anything is wrong with it because the root of the thought process can... can if if the dot connects, cool. Mm-hmm. But if if it's like I want to be single, it's like why I want to be single? Why you want to be single? Well, my last relationship it showed me that. Do you want to be single? Or are you afraid of feeling that again? Mm-hmm. So if the dot connects to where it's like, hey, you know what? I really really want to be single. It's like why do you want to be single? Well, since I was coming up, you know, I tried to date a little bit, and I was just I've always been a very very ambitious person since I was a kid. When I was nine years old, I started my lemonade stand. It was this boy who liked me. It was getting in the way of it. I I franchised that. Now I'm about to be an Instagram entrepreneur. I franchised that, you know, and then we got a distribution center, and it just feels like somebody's gonna get in my way. I don't care to leave a legacy for any children or anything. I don't care to have any children. I don't care to be bothered with anybody. Like I'm I'm okay with being single. I'm just I love my family that I have now and I don't care to create anybody mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. How am I gonna argue with that? Nah. You can't argue with it. Yeah. You can't argue with it. I just don't think that's the best. 
I don't no, think that's the why, best option. But, 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 but that, that's, well, that may be best for the person, though. Right. What do you mean best option, though? Why, why wouldn't it be the best well, option? I just, I don't think you could reach your full potential as a human without a partner. That's a hot take, right? It's I don't a, think you could reach a, your a full, full potential as a, as a human, human without a partner. Without a partner. People are going to be leaving in the country. They're going to be like, oh, bro. So, so. so, I mean, potential granted, as a human. again, that's the LeBron analogy. But uh, um, I will say this. The formula says it's easier building a house with two people than one. Yeah, that's what the formula says. The formula says that. But right. if somebody says, hey, this was my, my, my journey that I created already, and this is what I went for, and this is the plan that I have... Somebody coming in that picture might mess up their plan. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. If the dots connect, cool. But if you're just saying this based off of if, if it's an emotional decision, I would like to get to the root of the emotion. I, yeah. think, I think being single, um, choosing to be single, even if you want, choosing to be single, even if you want a relationship, but saying that I'm just going to be single because you're afraid of the, I think, you know, that's settling. That's a form of settling. Mm. Mm, so people like say that. so people say I, like I don't that. so you are, you're like the mindset is I don't want to settle for a relationship I don't, but but single being single when you want a relationship is settling mm -hmm. I got I got I have some friends in that position that's settling you know I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the people who don't want kids though because mm -hmm. that's a huge responsibility right, right, right you know what I mean so right. to, to say like hey like I'm just I, I just don't want kids I don't think there's anything wrong with those people right, because right. I would hate for for that person to have children and not, not want and want to abandon the responsibility, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean. So, but I, can you still be that person and still um, be uh, make contributions to a family? Can you still be the single person or the person? Can you kids? be the person that doesn't want kids and still make contributions to family structure? Yeah, but I technically won't be your family. Mm. You don't have you technically don't have a family till you have children, right? Do you, do you think people have? Sure. Yeah, as an adult, yeah. True. Do you think people who who say I don't want children think through when they are, you know, 70, 80 years old? No way. No, no, no way. No. No way. They just think they no think. Way. And they don't have they don't have a parent or someone that they know and love close to them that's in that age that's by themselves. Nope. Because yeah. I do. You guys didn't even Yeah, nope. 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 Okay. people only nope. people nope. only say that. Nope. People only say that from a comfortable position yep. when they when they're young that's and they're fact. youthful. And they're only thinking about how it's going to get in the way now. It's only what that's, that's all that means. But when you when you're 80, 60, 70, you want kids, dog. Yeah. So for the anomalies that are out there, the people who have had their successful life and they didn't have any children and now they're on the back end of their life and their back end of success. Do you think those people look? at not having children as a blessing or do you think those people look at not having children as man I think I, I should I should have took some time for that do do these people have partners loosely loosely I, I think I think as you, you age, know their work comes first yeah I think as you age you start to regret not having yeah. children and offspring I think so like and it's and we feel like this is something like, that's innate I, th I think you regret it yeah. That's okay. what I think. I think you regret not having so kids too. at that age. Because when your life slow down, you start realizing what's around me. And what matters the most. You don't have that extra love around or people just to exp share joy with. Man. And, and then people probably don't even think that. People probably don't, don't really picture themselves being old and family not being around they probably think that there's someone going to be there or some people going to be around that they still care and still is going to be there taking care of them that's the idea that people paint probably that because you know, there's so many people around in your life you, now you think people are going to be there to take care of you when people can't take them at that age people are not going to be able to take care of themselves they're going to be struggling to take care of themselves people may not even be around there's nobody going to take care of you like a like a daughter there's nobody in the world that's going to take care of you like a daughter when you're old, or just make you feel alive like a daughter. No way. It's funny, me and Brittany always be talking, and she's like, man, I just hope I go before you. I can't handle if you go before me. I'm just like, oh, damn. Man, those are real discussions at the house. Okay. Those are real discussions. <laughs> I mean, I mean we gotta wrap this up. <laughs> hey, man, oh, y'all be talking about that too. Yeah, bro. I mean, she cause. Be like, don't say that. 
Because when you, t- you talk about having a plan, them talking about their 40-year plan and the wife dying and him still carrying out the plan, those are real life events that could happen, you know? And you would be a fool not to acknowledge the possibilities of those type of events occurring in y'all life. And if and when they do, you know, we got to talk about it. And so, yeah, we do have those discussions, bro. It's, it's, you hate even thinking about it. Nah, man. You hate even thinking about it, but you know, it's I, like ideally, ideally, both of y'all go at the same time, hold hands like I, this, ideally, in the, in the like, bed. like a notebook, and shit. <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> nah, but ideally. I, ideally, right? And it's crazy because I know how passionate she is about it, and I love her so much that I actually really, really hope that she goes before it. Not even in a selfish way, that she goes before me because I know how much it would devastate her if I go before her. Mm. So I, I hope she never has to experience that. Mm. Because, you know, you, you, you know your partner, you learn your partner, you know exactly what they've been through, what affects them the most, mm-hmm. what, what makes them tick, what makes them sad. And like, it's crazy. I got someone in my mm-hmm. family who mm-hmm. lost their partner and it was almost nine years ago. And I love this person dearly and still affected by that. Mm-hmm. Like when you lose your partner, man, some people, Bro. some people, I don't want to say they'll never rebound. Yeah. You lose a part of yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. We, like we, we lost parents. So I couldn't imagine. A partner. It's not, it's nothing. And then there's nothing nobody could do to comfort you. Cause that would be the person to be doing the comforting. Yeah. Check this out though. We lost parents, right? And my mom and dad wasn't together, but my mom felt that. Yo, one thousand percent. I never asked you. My mom felt Did that. Did you, you? Your your mom cried in Did front my of mom you. Mom cry? Uh huh. Yeah, she felt that. Bro, I told you guys, right? Yep. Dog, my dad cried, and when and when I, it hit me, I said, "Oh, he lost his girl." Yep. The same way we got our girl right now. Yep. I said, "Oh, he lost his girl." Mm-hmm. Oh, I just looked at it. You, my mom, and you, my dad. Mm-hmm. You was looking at it like that too, yeah, huh? But they wasn't even together though, and it's just like, yo, same, same. same we got, wasn't but together. But we got kids together. Yeah, yeah. We, we have kids. a family. We got kids. We One thing family. we got. A, we got everything. I kind of created was for you, bro. Yeah. And that person gone. Oh, yeah. what blew my mind. Yeah. I didn't know it was gonna be like that. But I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Think about this, like, yeah. bro, the person who you got your family with. I don't yeah. care if we're not together for 20 years, bro. Yeah. You you mine. <laughs> you mine, yeah. you know? So, hey, speaking of, your mom and your dad were married. Mm-hmm. When your mom passes, mm-hmm. where does she get buried? Um, She gets buried at her village. Okay. Yeah. She, she, like, she's no my longer at No, nah, my, mom, my mom been remarried. Before. Oh, she had her, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, she been remarried before. Got you. So, but she still. So home. she won't. She won't she go to his village though. Nah, she's going she to. still. He and Asha though. She still because we got the lane. Facts. Facts. Right. Facts. Yeah. I can't leave my kid. I'm not leaving my yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, hmm. I always wonder why my mom kept. Because listen, kept because dad. like you know, I think I, I I'm not sure how it goes, but you know, you know once you once you once you like are right, Ihanacho, like that's now your name. So now, if you get remarried and you go to whatever, you can go back to Ihanacho because that was the name. You don't have, you don't go back to like ah uh, because yep, right? that was your name because that was your name. Yep. You, like you don't just go back to your original name. Now you go back to whatever your name was. Wow. Wow. Yep. So okay. yeah. Okay. So she's one of us. Okay. okay. Um. Listen. That's it, y'all. <laughs> That's the show. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, if you enjoyed this show, please leave a comment. Let us know what you thought. Share this with a friend. Help us grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, help us continue to get nice and neat out there. Help us continue to just impact people and share these conversations with people. Um, do us a favor. Make sure you guys are, one, subscribe to this channel. All right, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, go check us out on Patreon. We got BTS content. We got early access content. We go, we're going on live. A whole bunch of good things happening on Patreon, and the link is in the description. Be also sure to make sure that you are checking us out on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, 
all right, whatever podcast streaming apps you guys love and make sure you guys are all following us on Instagram individually and at the nice and neat Instagram. So mine is at Duke, D-U-K-E, Jelan at Just.Jelan and Omar, Omar Bowden. Please tap in with us and stay connected. All right. We got a lot of big things coming this year. Um, yeah, fellas. Yeah. Last thing I got is if you guys are watching, I want you to drop it in the comments below. What city you guys think we should come to, uh, do a live show, fellas check in, and just begin to build, build community outside of the community that we've built here in LA. So if you somewhere in Austin, that's your city, drop it in the comments. I, I posted this on my, my, my Instagram. I, I saw a lot of North Carolinas in there. Um, so wherever you at, man, if you're a fan of Nice and Neat, you want us to come to your city, drop it in the comments below so we can begin putting together this tour. And with that said, I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. This is another episode of Nice and Neat, and that's that on that. Peace. I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old now, I don't no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, or else get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm going to pull a four in the white sand.